$100 silver. We're going to talk about that. Is it possible? How soon could we see $100 silver? You want to know, I'm going to give you my answer a little bit later in this video, but what is going on with China, silver, gold, and Janet Yellen? We got some crazy news regarding Janet Yellen's most recent trip to China, and I think it has everything to do with the silver price and with the unbelievable demand on a wholesale industrial level that we're seeing for silver right now. And that will play a big part in the future silver price, the real value. We talk about that basement dwellers, real value, not nominal value, not unicorn, fart dust, paper, fiat, whatever you want to call it, value. We're interested in real value, and we're going to get to the bottom of it. And what scary, scary, scary things is Jamie Dimon, the CEO of J.P. Morgan Chase, the biggest you know investment bank in the world? What is he saying that should have us all shaking in our boots? Is he giving us a dose of reality? And what will that have to do with the price of silver and gold? But first, let's talk. I know you're all upset. I understand. I'm not real happy about it either, right? Gold and silver once again shot up this morning only to be pulled back, back, back. Let's run out to Pimbex real quick and get a an up-to-date uh, uh, price quote on what is going on in the silver and gold markets. Here's our friends at Pimbex. Okay, so gold, 2340. Now you stay with me here, basement dwellers, because we're going to have a little dose of reality. And we have silver at 27. Yes, I said $27.69. We'll round that up to 27.70. Hey, look, guys, this happens all the time. Have you noticed this lately? Does it make you a little suspicious, but possibly suspicious in a more happy way? Have you noticed over especially the last three or four weeks this is happening with the gold price, and even more recently with the silver price, where it shoots up either overnight in China or early in the morning in the U.S., then it pulls back, almost like we're seeing today, almost to even. Silver oftentimes will be down 10 or 15 cents, only then to get stronger in the subsequent hours. That's a very, very bullish, very good sign for the silver and gold set, uh, price, because what we're doing what we're doing, guys, is we are stair-stepping higher, okay? Little by little by little by little, the price keeps going up and getting stronger and stronger. And do you think that we'll see $100 silver? I do think we will see it. I know you can, I know my, some of you will, will bash me for saying it, $100 silver. <clears throat> it's okay for Keith Newmeyer from First Majestic to say it. But I firmly believe that we will see it in the coming years. And when I say coming years, I'm thinking two, three, four, maybe five years. But it's coming and we're going to be uh, ready for it. And we're going to be able to look back and say everyone, everyone else will be in shock, <clears throat> right? We'll look back and say, no, we saw it coming. We put the pieces together, okay? What's so crazy? What? what I'm going to ask you. What do you think is so crazy about this big rally that we've had in gold and silver? Guys, again, gold's at $2,340. If it's going to be smashed, take a deep breath. Think about this. If we if we had been talking about this eight, nine months ago, and I told you that on, what is today? April 9, 2024, the gold price was going to get smashed. It was going to get bashed down by 20 or $30 per ounce from its morning all-time high. But then I told you that it was going to get bashed down to $2,340. Same thing with silver. When we were sitting with 23, 24, what, $22 silver at one point. And I told you the silver price was going to get bashed by almost $1 in a couple hours but it was going to get bashed down to $27.70, you'd be happy. So let's keep things in perspective. We are still in a definite uptrending market for the metals. Are you? Do you believe? Do you believe? I believe. I'm a believer. I'm going to type it in the comments. We haven't done this for a while. If you're a believer, and I'll tell you what, don't type it yet. Well, you can. You can't control what you do. 
believer. I think I spelled that right. Susie's not here right now to correct me, but do you believe that we could be in a long-term bull market for the silver price and gold price? I believe we can. I showed you a chart yesterday. Let's just go look at it real quick. Uh, hold on. That's not it. That's not it. There. No, that's gold versus the mining stocks. There we go. Take a look at this, guys. Okay. One last time. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're going to take a look at this chart. The yellow, the big yellow points, and this goes back to 1970, those are bull markets in the gold part, in the gold market. Where gold goes, silver will follow. Look at some of these periods of time that lasted 10, 12, five, six years, okay? Uh, granted, that big major section from what, about 1980, we did have a 20-year bear market, but hey, we are now on the far right, that little blue section, that shows us what's going on right now. Look how small that is compared to the other bull markets. Uh, we have to be realistic here. We have to we have to realize we can have a long-term bull market. Thank you, Don Howe, for the super chat. Thank you, Clifton, for the super chat. And if I miss any super chats, I apologize. Like I said, I'm doing this completely solo. I, had, I even hope you guys can see me and hear me, right? Because it's a big deal that you, real quickly, we're going to talk about number one, you are here, okay? You are the most important part of Ron's Basement. It's a big honor to me when you join me and us, right? We're the group. We're the basement dwellers. So thank you for being here. Thank you for your support. You know, you can subscribe. You know, you can give it a thumbs up. All of that is greatly appreciated. They are starting. What do you think when you hear? Now everybody's talking about it. They're starting to talk about gold, not silver yet. But we'll talk about why that's good for silver. But they're starting to talk about gold on the mainstream media. Yes, CNBC, Bloomberg, Reuters. We're seeing more and more articles, and people are starting to point this out. I'm getting more and more people asking me about gold and silver. Are you starting to notice friends and family that know that you, uh, let's say, have a certain affinity toward the precious metals? Are they starting to ask you about the metals? That's good, and that's just beginning. Thank you, Ron McAdams, for the super chat. It's just starting. That's the big key critical thing to remember. Okay, we're just starting to see gold get some attention. Now that it's at all-time highs, if anything else was at an all-time high, it's all they would talk about, right? Apple stock, NVIDIA, whatever. But now that gold is getting near all-time highs, the mainstream media is starting, just starting to pick up on it. On a scale of 1 to 100, I'd maybe give it a 15. In terms of their coverage of silver, what would you give it? I would say on a scale of 1 to 100, the mainstream media maybe gives silver a 2 or a 3. They, like, never talk about silver. But the important thing for us to remember is that provides us with a long runway. Imagine, right? A long, a big area of improvement. And when it improves... It's going to be waves and waves of money coming into the market. Let's take a look at this slide. I thought this was very interesting, and I think you will too. That's why I've decided to share it with you. Here we go. This is from uh, Lawrence McDonald, and he talks about market capitalization. I didn't realize this. The total gold market capitalization, guys, is $16 trillion. Gold is the godfather of all the precious metals. Gold is the godfather of the monetary system. Gold is the base of everything. So is silver, but let's go down the line. Microsoft, 3 trillion. Crypto, almost 3 trillion. Apple, 2.6. NVIDIA, Saudi Aramco, that was the biggest company in the world at one point. That's the Saudi oil company, 2 trillion. Amazon, 2. Google, 2. Silver, silver. 1.6 trillion dollar total market cap. I guess that's measuring all the silver throughout the entire world, but isn't it interesting that the market cap of silver is only 10% that of gold. And we know, right? We know when silver moves, right? It's slingshot move in silver that it can move like absolute crazy. So right now we're in this weird situation, right? Um, we're with gold. 
we are at all-time highs, pushing up against all-time highs, almost no resistance. That means gold can move higher and higher and higher. But what about silver? What about that $100 silver you were talking about, Ron? Well, we're nearing this $28 level. This explains to us why we're seeing such a battle at this $28 level for silver. Silver needs to push through 28. And I'm going to explain to you why. But also, remember, that's why the powers that be, just possibly, right? I have no proof. <laughs> but there's a big battle, uh, a big uh, appears to be concerted effort to keep silver below $28. Because I've held, and many of the top analysts have held, and this is interesting, that the essential... Uh, let's say all-time high for silver is in that $28 to $30 range. Yes, sure, silver spiked up to $50 a couple times. Very, very, very short periods of time. Essentially, for all intents and purposes, what we're looking at with silver is a level where there will be very little limited overhead resistance. <clears> Hold <throat> excuse me, I had to clear my throat, Little, very little overhead resistance will be above that $28 to $30 range. So that explains, does that make sense to you? Why the powers that be, maybe a couple of the big investment banks, maybe, I'm just saying maybe some other organization, maybe big industrial interest, who knows, right? But there seems to be a lot of downward pressure placed on silver right now, anytime it gets above $28. Guys, when it gets above 30, okay, it is, it's clear sailing. There's very little overhead resistance above it. And when you couple that with what is just, I mean, the most interesting, the most confounding fundamental factors supporting any commodity, anything in the world. How many people have you heard say silver is the most undervalued asset in the world? I hear it almost every single day and not from just random people. I'm talking about the smartest, the most successful people in the investment community. And then everybody says silver has a lot of catching up to do. That catching up will be in the form of a run from above 30 up to as high as $100 per ounce. How long will it take? It's not going to happen. I mean, it could happen very quickly. Absolutely. But I would say on average, I'm looking at about three years out where I can clearly see that we could be at $100 silver. Look, that's my opinion. You're entitled to your own opinion. Don't make any financial decisions based upon anything that I say. But to me, it's very, very clear that we're seeing a confluence of positive factors that absolutely could push the silver price to levels that don't seem real. Does it not seem real to you that we could see? I, it, I can see it now. Okay. And you know what? At the end of the day, it does it matter? Yeah, sure. Measured in fiat dollars that we get to $100 silver. But I can clearly see. Look at what's happened to cocoa. Look at what's happened to oil. Right. Look at, I mean, oil was negative a few years ago at one point. Oil was 20, 30. Right now it's what, $85 a barrel? I haven't checked today. So it, it, it will happen for silver and it could happen even more. To be honest with you, I think that we could see $150, $140 silver at some point. It'll be interesting as we see how that, but when do we sell? Right. When do we sell? When do we sell our gold? I'm hearing some people say it might be a good time to sell some of your gold. It might be a good time to sell some of your silver. Look, everybody has their own opinion. Everybody has their own strategy for that. Uh, but here's one thing that I thought of that I think is sad and funny at the same time. And I wrote this out for you, basement dwellers. And thank you, basement dwellers. You know, when you're here in the basement, right? Not just with me, but with all, we're basement dwellers. We love our silver. We love our gold. So thank you for being here. Sell when I wrote this for you. Even highlighted it. It's a good idea to sell if the government starts to get responsible. We keep things simple. Thank you, Silver Surfer. Hey, that's awesome. Thank you for the super chat. Hey, that's the time to sell if the government starts to get responsible. Because that's the bottom line. The government's not responsible. We are in a debt, fiscal, monetary doom loop, right? You want to talk about GDP? 
the GDP to the debt rate or debt to GDP, whatever it is, right? Oh, it's 120%. No country except England, I think, has ever recovered from having a debt to GDP ratio of over 120%, right? And the darn British, they're the trickiest financial people on the earth. No offense to the British, but they're the trickiest. They invented uh, monetary mirage, all that crazy stuff. They're the only ones, but you know what? The gold price, if you look at the gold compared to the pound, what they had to do to get out of that, it exploded. I'm sure it's because they just monetized everything, right? Silver and gold, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I have to tell you this, <laughs> but measured in, in, where is it? Measured in these, right? It's only going to go up and up. And I'm going to be quick when I preach this to you, okay? Right? We don't really want to care what gold and silver are measured in these. We don't care. We want to care about our ounces. You know that whole, you're a basement dweller. You know that, right? We need to reprogram. You, we need to be reprogrammed. We need to realize. Do you realize how important this is? It doesn't matter. What does it matter what gold is priced at in Confederate dollars or in the Deutschmarks that they had or whatever they were using during the Weimar situation or in or in um, Argentina here? You want to see? I'm going to I'm going to show you why. I'm going to show you something very interesting. Hold on here. I'm going to try to smile when we do this. Hold on. We're almost there. We're there. We're there. <laughs> That's why it doesn't matter. That's why it doesn't matter what we measure it in any fiat currency, because this is Argentina, and I don't even know what the price is right now, but on uh, November 25th of 2013 in Argentina, the price of silver was 122 pesos. Pesos? So, do I have that right? Argentine, uh, yeah, well, anyway, yeah, Argentine pesos, okay? By, um, let's see here. 8,700 pesos, Argentine pesos, on the same date, uh, what, what is that, 10 years later. Only a 7,000% increase. Only a 7,000%. Now, let's go out. Let's do something fun here because that was as of <clears throat> November 25th, 2023. Remember, started out at uh, 122 pesos. Let's go take a look right now at what the silver price is in Argentine pesos. Hey, guys, wait a minute. Where am I? All right, there's Pimbex. Hey, come on, silver. You can do it. Let's do a quick update. Let's do a quick update. And whoa, look at that. Hey, it came back already. The longer we stay live, gold up $8 now, silver only down two cents. Uh, let's go over here and let's say silver price in, see how fast I can type? Thank you, Mr. D.C. Wilcutt at CBC High School for slapping my hands and making me learn how to type on a manual typewriter. Greatest guy, one of the most successful high school basketball coaches in the history of the world. He was also a typing teacher at my high school. I think it's a critical skill to teach young people how to type. You didn't ask about that. In Argentina, let's see if that brings it up. Uh, okay. So as of April 7th, 2024, one ounce of silver is worth only 23,653. All right. Okay. Let's go. Let's go back to this and take a one more quick look. Okay. Well, um, it only went up, let's see, it was 8,700 on November 25th of 2023. So in five months now, it's Almost tripled again. Okay, off of, off of that subject. That's why that's why the price of silver could go to six thousand U.S. dollars, twelve thousand U.S. dollars. Guys, here's the key: Argentina is no different than the United States. There's this thing in our. Have you heard of this concept called math? Right? Yeah, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. The basics, the real basics. Sure, you have those laws apply in Argentina. And they printed too much money. They were fiscally and monetarily irresponsible. Guess what? Guess what? Even though we're a lot bigger and a lot more powerful, those same laws of mathematics apply to the United States. Sorry. And guess what? More than half of the world, the BRICS, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, Iran, 
uh, uh oh, I'm forgetting Iran. What's the S? Okay, Egypt, Ethiopia, and the United Arab Emirates. I forgot the one that started with S. I used to be the guy. Well, that's nine of the ten, and there's like 30 other countries. They're they're calling. They're 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 telling the United States, uh, your credit card has met its limit. Sorry, Janet Yellen. Sorry, Joe Biden. Sorry, Americans, your credit card is over the limit. You can't spend anymore. We're not giving you our resources. We're not giving you. So we are in for a potential. Don't want to be the town crier. What's that guy? Johnny Little, whatever, right? Uh, the sky's falling, but boy, oh boy, it's not looking real, real good. Okay, I'm sorry. They're waking up. Okay, eventually there's no choice. This is the bottom line debt monetization in the United States. That's why interest rates will stay high. Don't believe this whole interest rates have to go down for gold and silver. No. Everybody, we talked about this for months, months and months. Now everybody's talking about it. The fact that interest rates don't have to go down, interest rates won't likely be going down. I could be wrong. I'm always happy to admit when I'm wrong, but if they don't have to go down for the gold and silver price to go up. People just need to wake up that the real value of the dollar is going into the toilet. And when your neighbor who's more obsessed with, I don't know, whatever, you know, anything but silver and gold, because there's hardly anybody's like us, when they start to wake up, be prepared. Precious metals, we're in this crazy environment, crazy new environment right now, okay? I heard uh, Jorge Ganoza, CEO of Fortuna Silver, talking about this in a recent interview with Chris Marcus from Arcadia Economics. He's like, but what, you know, what, why did the, when the good employment numbers came out last week, the price of gold and silver went up? That's different. We're in a new paradigm, right? He was asking Peter Spina and uh, Dave Kranzler and Chris Marcus about this. And what I think, is that we are in a new paradigm, right? Things have changed and that's proof. Things that should have killed. Gold and silver are sniffing out, are calling BS. I know no other way to say it. I don't know if the term is, I don't know. I always say everything wrong and I get in trouble with Susie. Calling monkey? Is that an appropriate thing to say? I hope I didn't get in trouble saying that. Calling BS on the whole system. The bottom line is the real value of the dollar. Precious metals, silver, gold calling BS on this rate cut argument, right? <laughs> Precious metals calling BS on the BLS. I love it. <laughs> calling BS on the BLS, the ba ba Bureau of Labor and Statistics, I think it is. Some people I heard on Wall Street call it the Bureau of Lies and Statistics. I'm not calling it that. We never say anything disrespectful about our fine government organizations. But nonetheless, silver and gold, they're calling BS on the BLS, okay? Tomorrow, big news. Oh, my gosh. Are you ready? Tomorrow, we get the CPI report or what some people, not me. I'm just telling you what other, some people call it, not the CPI, but the CP lie. Because they don't believe. Can you believe that? They don't believe the data that comes from our government about inflation, right? That we got 3% inflation right now. What a joke. It'll be interesting. Tomorrow's going to be a critical day. Well, I'm going to warn you. Warning. I need to get up. Where'd it go? Here. My daughter, Evelyn. Oh, hey. <laughs> warning. Thank you, Evelyn, for letting me use your 10-year-old Halloween costume as a prop. Warning. Tomorrow, warning, okay? It could be a big, big move day in the price of silver and gold, right? The CPI comes out and, oh boy, you know, but it's going to be super interesting to number one, see what they report, which is always interesting, but number two, how silver and gold react. Guys, we are in a new, we are in a new weather. Can you accept it? I, I'm, I'm working on it, right? Acceptance takes a little while. It's not a switch. We're in a new, we could be in a major bull market. For We've got silver at $27. Let's go out to Pimbex. Hold on, hold on. We, I got, we got a, the funnest part of the show <laughs> besides getting to see you. Okay, silver, right? Only down two cents. Gold, only down are up $8 per ounce. That's awesome. Let's say thank you to channel sponsor Pimbex. 
Uh, if you decide that you want to buy some silver, gold, or platinum, and you're going to shop online, absolutely, please. Okay, Susie's yelling at me. I'll turn on the walkie-talkie. Sorry, Susie. I didn't realize Susie came home. Uh-oh. I better watch myself. Now, um, back to Pimbex. You want silver, gold, or platinum? Go check out Pimbex. I'm not telling you what to do. Consider, compare. Consider and compare. CC, okay? P-I-M-B-E-X. Consider them and compare. Do your own research. Read reviews. That's how I found out about Pimbex was from fellow basement dwellers. Several of you, three or four said, Ron, check out this company, Pimbex. And I'm like, I've never heard of them. This was a year ago, okay? I looked into the company. I read about the company. I did several transactions with the company. What I found was I got exactly what I wanted, the exact same silver products that I could get from other online bullion dealers, but I got a lot more for my money with Pimbex, okay? A lot more. In the packages, I'm coming, I'm telling you, they come, they're wrapped up like Fort Knox. Uh, their customer service was awesome. And uh, then it became a big honor for me when I developed this uh, sponsorship, par partnership with Pimbex, that I could then tell the basement dweller community about it. And they help support the channel and help make uh, live streams and videos like this possible. Thank you, Pimbex. Thank you. All right, we back on. I'm back on. Thank you for the support. And if you ever decide that you want to convert part or all of an IRA to precious metals, check out Pimbex as well. Okay. I think you'll find, again, you'll get more metal for your money. Let's move on. Oh, yeah. Here, 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 here. Let's just see what the professionals are saying quickly about what's going on. This is interesting. Inflation data. And boom. Here we go. This came from Zero Hedge says headline, uh, Bloomberg. This is from Bloomberg Markets Live reporter and strategist Garfield Reynolds. Garfield. That, I guess that, I, that, that's an interesting first name. Anyway, traders, traders doubts Fed can hit inflation goal. Uh, so traders doubts that the Fed can hit their inflation goal underscore CPI risk. Let's just read this first paragraph. So I think that sums it up. Usually that does with most articles. The treasury market is palpably on tenter hooks. Going into this week's inflation release, remember guys, that's tomorrow, especially after payrolls join the long list of data releases to come, to come in stronger than expected. Bond traders' inflation expectations have surged this year. Boy, we talked about that, uh, what, about four months ago, three months ago, guys? To signal doubts, that the Federal Reserve and Gomer Pyle, Jerome Powell, I'm sorry, can meet its goal, meaning risks are tilted to the upside for yields going into Wednesday's CPI release. Okay, yada, yada. So now that, that's why it's going to be so critically important to see how the gold market and silver market react tomorrow, because we're probably going to get high inflation numbers right? Which means the Fed's going to be more hawkish. Oh, we need to continue our fight on inflation, which should torpedo the silver and gold price. If that happens, I'm going to be a little bummed out. Will you be a little bummed out? Of course, I would imagine you will. You're a silver and gold enthusiast. Unless you're one of those people. Are you one of those people that every time the price, when it does get torpedoed, and we may be, that may be something of the past, but nonetheless, when the price does get torpedoed, and then, then people send me these emails saying, you should be happy when the silver price goes down because that means you can buy more silver for a lower price. I'm like, I got plenty, okay? I'm ready for the hundred, the honey, the hundred dollar silver. I'm sure I'll buy more and I do. And gosh darn it, let me tell you something. This is so important, right? I'm not telling, but, but you know, the time to buy silver is when the price goes down. The time to buy silver is when the premiums are low. Now, right now, the premiums are still at historically very reasonable level. So right now could still be a good time to buy silver. But guys, when it starts zooming, you do whatever you want, right? I guess in theory, right? If I'm saying I think silver can get to $100, well, then if it's $35, now's a good time to buy. You know, So yes, I still think. But but be careful with FOMO, right? Silver, gold is the original fear of missing out trade. Silver 
is like the fear of missing out trade on steroids. Rick Rule always says, right? He always says, right? Silver investors pile in as the price goes up and up and up. And that could be what, what you'd like to already have done at that point is you'd like to already have your, your silver stack or your gold stack for that matter. Uh, but you would already want to have it established and you can ride it up. And then, hey, you know what? If, like I said earlier, if the government gets responsible and starts spending less than they bring in, that might be a good sign that it's time to convert some of your silver into another asset. Okay. Um, <clears throat> what is this? this? This is big. This is big. This is big. And it has everything to do with what's going on. Unfortunately, this rally in gold, and I'm hearing this from a number of different sources, the public has been selling, all right, a little more than average into this rally in the silver price and gold price. They've been selling, selling some of their physical, okay? Everybody, the big smart guys, right? I think I heard Andy Sheckman say this last night in an interview. He was, I forget who he was with, but anyway, right? The public, unfortunately, historically, is almost always wrong, okay? Okay, so the fact that they're doing that is it's the biggest contrarian, potentially the biggest contrarian indicator ever, meaning the biggest indicator that what you should be doing is the opposite. Okay, because the biggest money, the biggest sovereign wealth funds, the biggest family offices, what does this mean? Right. The world central banks, they're all buying precious metals. But the individual investors in the West have started selling a little bit. It's a big, major contrarian indicator. It means good things to come, right? And where's all this silver and gold going? We're just going to touch on this. Let's not forget, it's basically going to India and China, okay? China and Russia in particular, okay? And the Indians are probably in on this too, because the Indians now have what's called the IIBX, which is where they sell silver contracts, right? But China and Russia are right now explicitly saying that they want to take control of, and this is where Yellen, crazy, crazy news about Janet Yellen, and it does have to do with silver is going to come into play. But China and Russia are explicitly saying they want to take control of the commodities prices, including agricultural commodities, but also silver and gold. And it's happening right now. Right? We don't like, I, we, you don't, I, we'll do our we don't like it speech. We don't have to like it. We don't have to like the position that our leaders have put us into after decades of poor, short-sighted, well, I would say greedy decisions. It's the reality of what's going on, and they're going to shove it down the throat. I, I have no other way to say it, of the United States. Cowbell. Oh, Cowbell, I got to ring the, know. what? Okay, say hi to everybody, Susie. Could you please say hello to everyone? Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. We really, really appreciate it. You're awesome. <laughs> okay, that, that's enough. Thank you. Okay, guys, I got to ring the cowbell. Then we're going to get into some crazy news about everyone's favorite. Yes, well, I put her in a pretty box. Do not feed magic mushrooms. Yes, the one and only Janet Yellen. And what that has to do with silver and gold. Where's the cowbell? Cowbell warning for all the people, right? I'm going to ring the cowbell to signify our solidarity and love for one uh, Love, like, high degree of like, basement dwellers. Um, but uh, for those of you that don't like bells, that was your warning. I know the guys at the Goldman Sachs trading desk have to mute their speakers. Here we go. I forgot to tell you, we all smile together. It feels good to smile. Come on, everybody. Big smile. All right. <laughs> Be a little cheesy. What's going on with Yellen? Stop buying silver. Is that what she was telling the Chinese? Stop. Stop buying silver. Okay. Because apparently she, yes, her. She can you see her? There she is. I like Janet. What's in the I forget what she has. Oh. <laughs> You'll never guess what's in the box with her. <laughs> a 
a cockroach. Anyway, she went to China. Big trip to China, right? Lay down the law. This is big news. This has a lot to do with what's going on in the world, which will have a lot to do with what's going to go on in the silver and gold market. Okay? She's getting tough on China. Did you hear that? Okay? Uh, she told them, this is crazy. She basically told them, in so many words, the analysis that I've read, stop making so many solar panels. Stop making so many electric cars. I don't know if you've, you've heard this or not, but the Chinese have become very efficient at manufacturing solar panels. And they've got some electric cars. I mean, look, I don't like it. I'm not, but China is kind of kicking, uh, kicking rear end in the electric car market. They've got electric cars that are like, a third of the price or half of the price of what we can produce? Hold on one second. And 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 uh, and and now Yellen's over there saying, we're not going to let you sell your electric cars in the United States. We're not going to let you sell your, you're cheating. You're being subsidized by the government, right? This is the reality. After she left, the Chinese people, the Chinese media is making a laughing stock out of her. Wow. Thank you. Great, Nate. I'm old. Avoid all bars. All right, buddy. Yeah. 90% constitutional. A lot of people love it. I do too. They're making fun of her. They are, they are like uh, on Chinese social media were unfortunately not being very nice to our treasury secretary who used to just happen just coincidentally does that make you think, huh? I was thinking about this last night. Janet Yellen, she's our Treasury Secretary. What'd she do before that? Oh, she was the head of the Federal Reserve. Oh, isn't that interesting? <laughs> think about it. No, nothing to see there. That was just a coincidence. She just happened to become available for the job. So, oh, we'll take the ex-Fed president and make her the Treasury Secretary. Give me a break. Give me a break, okay? Do you think, okay, uh, well, let's back up. Let's back up. Didn't we bash China? Okay, we're telling China, stop buying all the silver for your solar panels. Stop buying all the silver you need to make all these electric cars. I'm reading between the lines, okay? We're telling them, stop making all this green, environmentally friendly products. What are you doing making solar panels, China? What are you doing making so many electric cars, right? Huh? Isn't it make you, this is going to floor you. Think back eight years ago. Let's see, that would be uh, 2016. You were a little younger, but no better looking than you are today. I can guarantee you. But what was the only thing that we heard? China pollutes the world. Remember the pictures of the rivers that were green and blue and pink and all these chemicals and China. Remember, remember this one? Remember this one? I know because I've got a relatives and neighbor friends that are that are management level people at a couple of the big coal companies headquartered in St. Louis. I always pay attention to coal. Remember they China was 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 destroying the earth because of all their coal burning plants and China's going to destroy everything. And now what 8 years later? Did I say 8? Yeah, 8 years later, Yellen's over there saying, "Stop making solar panels." Stop making so many electric cars. It makes no sense. Do you think maybe this is election year shenanigans? Oh my God. What else, what else, what else is repulsing you right now about election year shenanigans? Here's the nuclear bomb. This one, I don't know. I don't know those blood pressure numbers, but this one makes my blood boil. Okay. Now we're getting all these headlines. Just, just, I mean, what perfect, I mean, it's so stupid. I'm sorry, I have to use the S word, stupid and dumb, right? Now Biden is coming out saying, oh, we're going to wipe out st all student loan debt. I mean, we're going to wipe it out. Bidenomics, we're going to wipe just wipe it out. I mean, I won't even go down that path. And yes, sure, if I had a bunch of student loan, I'd be selfishly like, yeah, yeah, great, let's do it. But most people don't, right? And it's crazy to think that they're talking about that. Anyway, let's go back to Yellen real quickly. This is this is uh, this is just <laughs> absolutely. This is CNBC. This is what the mainstream media is saying. Uh, the United States ready to sanction Chinese banks if they aid Russia's war machine. Yellen says, "Yeah, Yellen's getting tough." 
We're going to talk about the guy who talked about $60,000 silver here in a second. Okay. So here's, you know, Maine, the United States is prepared to sanction China. Let's read this. Let's just read the key points together. What do you say, basement dwellers? This is our world. The U.S. is prepared to sanction Chinese banks and companies, as well as Beijing's leadership, if they aid Russia's military in its invasion of Ukraine. U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen said on Monday. Okay, and what I'm, I, I am I am a born patriot American, right? But I'm telling you, what they're saying is. It double standard. I'll leave it at that. Double standard. The comments were part of a broader economic message that she's delivered to Chinese officials during her visit to the country over the past several days. The U.S. and China have been working to heal their relations, even as the two superpowers manage ongoing economic tensions. Okay, and let's just move right over here because we love we love to talk about gold and silver, and this has to do with China as well. From Zero Hedge, China gold buying sparks uh, friends, uh, China gold buying frenzy sparks chaos in ETFs. Basically, guys, what this uh, article is saying is that there is a gold mania going on in China for the first, uh, for the second time. And this was as of yesterday. Okay. For the second time in a week, Trading in an ETF that owns gold companies was halted in China overnight. The ETF's price had gained over 40% in the past four sessions before falling 10% after trading resumed Monday. Okay. Chinese people are have just gone absolutely crazy about what's going on um, in the gold market. And, and we know why, right? Makes sense. Okay. Makes perfect sense. Let's talk about some doom and gloom. Well, let's talk about, let's just go back to our friend Robert Kiyosaki here real quickly. Don't forget the Argentine peso, according to this chart, right? Only went up 7,000%, but now it's up 3,000, I'm sorry, 300 more percent from where that was. But let's go. That's the old, there's the gold bull market. Yes, silver is still $3 an ounce more in China. Oh, here we go. Robert Kiyosaki. Tech are, are tweeted this, uh, what, two days ago. The everything bubble, stocks, bonds, real estate, set to crash. Okay, it's Robert Kiyosaki. U.S. debt increasing by only $1 trillion every 90 days. The United States is bankrupt. He put that in all caps. Guys, the, it, it, it's true. We're bankrupt. Okay, the United States is bankrupt. Save yourself. Please buy more real gold, silver, and Bitcoin. We talk about gold and silver here. Crypto people can do what they like. I will say crypto people and gold and silver people, as is indicated in this in this text, share a lot of the same fundamental beliefs when it comes to the fiat paper money system, the fiscal and monetary situation in the world. And there was one more I wanted to look. All right, we already looked at that one. Let's talk about what Jamie Dimon, real quickly, you want some doom and gloom. What does it mean? Think about this. Jamie Dimon, CEO of JP Morgan Chase, right? The biggest investment bank in the whole history of the universe. What does it mean when he's sounding the alarm bells? And I, I went through this article I want to talk about quickly, quickly. Where is it? Here it is. Oops, bear with me. Having technical problems as per usual. Okay. And let's make that big and let's go. All right, we're on. We're there, guys. We're there. Jamie Dimon warns, the world faces risk that eclipse anything since World War II. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. Let's just go through a couple of the, here it is. Okay. All right, we'll do the, we'll do the, the highlighted words. Across the globe, 2023 was another year of significant challenges, right? Wars in the Middle East, wars in, in Europe. As these un events unfold, America's global leadership role is being challenged outside by other nations and inside by our polarized electorate. No joke, we don't, I mean, the, we're, we're getting hit with a double, like a tsunami and a hurricane at the same time in the United States. The world is kind of ganging up against us. All right, we won't go into the, the reasons or the right or wrong of that, but the world is ganging up against us while at the same time, 
we can't get along internally. Okay, that's the bottom line. Uh, we've got uh, all types of financial turmoil. This may lead to stickier inflation and higher rates than markets expect. Furthermore, there are downside risks to watch. Okay, inflation and market over optimism, right? Geopolitical and e economic forces have unpredictable timetables, right? The inflation situation is not getting any better. We have ongoing concerns about persistent inflation. Let's highlight that one. We have ongoing concerns about persistent inflationary pressures and consider a wide range of outcomes to manage interest rate exposure and other business risk. Okay. Everything's inflate. I mean, everything's inflationary. Um, uh, he says here, quote, I believe the odds are a lot lower than that. Okay. Uh, the, the, in, re, in reference to this, these markets seem to be pricing in a 70, 80 percent of a soft landing. So we're talking about potential economic hard times. And, J and D Jamie Dimon thinks that the odds of the soft landing are much lower than the market uh, is talking about. Um, uh, therefore, we're prepared for a very broad range of interest rates from two to eight percent or even more. OK, economically, the worst case scenario would be stagflation, stagflation, stagnant economy with inflation. Are we in that now R in real terms? Right. Some people would argue it's going to be interesting tomorrow to see the CPI numbers. OK, but guys, remember this. There is no it's springtime. Are you planting anything? Tomato plants, garden, flowers, whatever. There is no more fertile soil in the history of the universe for the silver price and the gold price. No better environment to ask for than a stagflationary environment, okay? Uh, we've got banking issues, right? We know that, right? Treasuries and commercial real estate. And we're, we're going to leave it at that. We're going to leave it at that. I got one more interesting, crazy interesting and I'm going to harp on this because it's so critical that you as a silver and gold investor understand this idea. OK, one thing is going to drive all this noise tomorrow. The big. 300 thumbs up. OK, thank you. Susie says we got 300 thumbs up. That's awesome. I'm going to ring the gong at the very end. We've got a big critical point and I have a new way to explain this to you. Uh, last thing we're going to cover here. and. Uh, because everybody, everybody's everybody's talking about, oh, the dollar has to go down. It's all noise. The the inflation numbers tomorrow, noise. Okay, don't you? Know, we don't noise. Short term noise. Okay, the GDP numbers, short term noise. The employment numbers, short term noise. Okay, there's one thing, one big thing, right? One core reason, not the symptoms. But the reason, the cause that are going to make silver and gold, gold go much, much higher, uh, we're going to get to that first. I want to quickly say thank you to channel sponsor, First Mining Gold. You can learn more about First Mining Gold at firstmininggold.com. They have two multi-million ounce development stage projects in Canada. That's a safe place to have gold in the ground, their development stage, right? Because gold's being held in the what I would say the safest vault in the world, right? Deep under the earth, but they've spent millions and millions of dollars drilling, defining. You can learn more about them, like I said, at firstmininggold.com. Company started by Keith Newmeyer about what, eight, nine years ago now. What's this big factor that's going to drive the silver and gold price? Period. Right. It's the it's the deflation. It's the loss in value in the U.S. dollar. You've heard me say that every day for the last two weeks. All these we I could bore you with all these symptoms. Right. And we will we'll talk about them. But at the end of the day, it's the dollar going down. And I want to pull this up. OK, you've seen this before, likely basement dwellers. But I want you to look at this chart. That's the DXY. That's the dollar index to show you the absurdity of what's going on right now. If you look at that chart, it starts in 1985. The DXY was at about 120. The dollar was stronger than it is today. That would make sense, right? But if you move a little bit to the right and you get to about 1992, I looked up, that's the year I graduated from college. I looked up the, Ron, yeah, yeah. Kristen, who gave you a super chat earlier, wanted to read a comment from his super chat. It says, 
Tom Cotton wears a silver tie tack. <laughs> okay. Well, hopefully he's satisfied that you said it. I'll dig back through there at the very end and see if I can find it. 1992, guys, the DXY index was at 85. Okay, this we'll go through this quick. I want you to think about that. Today, the DXY index is close to 105, 104. I checked before I came on. That means, okay, that means that from 1992 through today, the dollar should be about 25% stronger. Okay, here. I want to ask you a question. I want you to look at that, okay? Do you think that today this buys 25% more goods and services than it did in 1992? Of course not. Of course not, right? No, In real terms, so critical for us to understand in real terms, not nominal, not adjusted, not massage, not bureau labor, in real terms, the value, unfortunately, if we'd stayed on the gold and silver standard, right? If Nixon hadn't hadn't pulled off the 1971 tragedy of taking us off the gold and silver standard, this would still buy the same amount. It would probably buy, think about 1971. What could you buy with this, right? I was one year old. I can think of 1980. I remember what I could get for a dollar. A dollar was a pretty big deal. I could run to the local 7-Eleven, get a Slurpee, maybe a burrito. I think the frozen burritos were like 25 cents and play a game of uh, a punch out or Donkey Kong or something, right? I mean, what can you get with this now at 7-Eleven? Hardly anything, okay? So the reality is the real value of the dollar is going to continue to go down. Had we stayed, what did the Philadelphia Fed just tell us? The Federal Reserve Bank of Philadelphia put out a report. They said, you know, we did a little research. What does this mean, guys? We did a little research and we discovered that the gold standard uh, or even, and they didn't say silver, but I'm going to say because we were on a bimetallic standard in this country, I think up through 1870. Anyway, that it, that it does a good job of, of preserving wealth. Okay. I mean, it's just absolutely absurd. So we can talk about all this noise. We can talk about all these different things going on, yelling, trying to tell China. China's sucking in all the world's gold and silver. India's sucking in all the world's gold. We can talk about all this BS. But at the end of the day, all you got to look is look at this. Go get yourself one of these. They're really pretty. Man, yeah. And look at it and think, 20 years from now, do I think that's going to be worth, have more real value than it does today or less? You know, I, I I'm uh, I'm super duper confident, although I cannot predict the future, that it's going to have less value. It's designed. I mean, the Federal Reserve is shooting for it to only go down by two percent. So there, mic drop. My gosh, mic drop. <laughs> I got to ring the gong. <coughs> Hold on a second. Bear with me. We're having technical problems. Hopefully, you can still see me and hear me. I'm trying to find the super chat. I was supposed to read something. Uh, I don't see it. Oh, man. I tell you what, the guy that gave the super chat that wanted me to read something, go to the description of this or any of the Ron's Basement videos where you can see my email address. Hey, guys, don't forget to go check out ronsbasement.com. Uh, we've got a we've got a, a contest going there where you can win two silver rounds. A fun little contest guessing what the silver price will be uh, on uh, July 3rd of 2024, but you can't really start entering that um, until tax day. But just, you can go register. There's a bulletin board out there where there's basement dwellers 24 hours a day. Uh, yeah, gong. Wow, thank you. Massive crowd today. Thank you guys for being here. Let's ring the gong, the golden gong, right? From our old friend Stu, three times for 300 thumbs up. Oh, hey, don't forget, everybody, smile. All right, guys, thanks for being here. Okay, I'll look forward to seeing you soon. Be nice to yourself. You deserve it, right? I'll be as nice as I can to myself. That way we're nicer to other people. And we'll, uh, we'll stay on top of this, you know, crazy times in the world but also crazy times in the precious metals market. Thanks for being here, okay? And I will see you soon.